This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing one of the most fun features in InDesign. If you'd like to follow along, go to File, Open, and in the Sample Files folder, scroll down and select 0903, Fun with Type on a Path, and just click Open. What is Type on a Path? It's ordinary, everyday type that just happens to be running along a path. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to my Type tool and select this type. And you can see there are various type formatting features in the control panel if I click on my paragraph formatting control button. And I can center the type to the path. I could align it to the right of the path. Or I can align it to the left. I can also go into my character formatting features by clicking on the A button. I can change my type family or my type style or the point size. Maybe I'll click the down arrow and I'll go all the way down to, let's say, 22 points for the type. And I can apply, instead of metric kerning, optical. So I can really do just about anything I could do with regular type. But what are some of the other options? If I go to my selection tool, I can see that a type on a path object has something called a start bracket and an end bracket, as well as an import and an outport, things you would expect to find in any type object to allow type to flow freely from one text object to another. But what is this start bracket about? If I go over the top of it, making sure not to click my import, I can click on that bracket and you can see I'm getting an icon of a pointer with a little line and arrow to its lower right. And if I click and drag, I'm actually changing where the type starts on the path. Let me go to my paragraph panel for a second and just click Align Right and get my panel out of the way. My end bracket controls where the type ends. And if I go back to my paragraph panel, I can center a line between the start and the end brackets. Kind of cool. But also, there's this center bracket. What is that about? If I click on the center bracket, I can move it to move as a unit the start and end brackets as well as all the type between them. So it moves them together. Kind of nice. I can also click on this center bracket and drag straight down. And you can see that now the type is running upside down on the bottom side of the path. Let me undo that by pressing Command Z, Control Z. So I'm back where I started. But how do I actually create type on a path? Well, to save a little bit of time in the lesson, I'm going to select my type and just copy it. Edit copy. And now I'm going to click down on my type tool and in the pop-up I'm going to choose type on a path tool. And you can see that when I go over the top of an ordinary everyday path I get an eye beam with a line going through it as well as a plus mark. The plus mark goes away if I'm not over a path that doesn't already have type on it. If I click with that plus mark showing it is now type on a path, and I could start typing. But instead, I'm going to go to Edit, Paste. And it pasted the type with the formatting, including being centered between the start bracket and the end bracket. Kind of cool. But there are lots of other options. Let me go back to my Type on a Path tool and just click and drag to select the type. And I'm going to go under my Type menu to Type on a Path Options. And it opens the Type on a Path Options window. The first section has to do with effects that you can apply. By default, it's applying something called Rainbow. If I click down on that and get a pop-up menu, I can go to something called Skew. Skew is actually 
making the type go back in space, and then when it comes to the top of a curve, it kind of flattens out and then goes back in space again. Kind of cool. I'm going to click down on the effect again and go to 3D Ribbon. And it's a very similar kind of effect in that it's going back in space and then flattening out and going back in space again. But it's handling each character as an individual unit. So kind of different. Let me go back under the effect pop-up and go to Stair Step. Stair Step has the type perpendicular to the page, yet it's following the path. So it almost looks like it's climbing down stairs. The last effect is Gravity. And in this case, it does some really odd things because it is not the right kind of object. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to hit Cancel. I'm going to go back to my Type on a Path tool and click on this square. And if I do that, it is now Type on a Path. And I'm going to paste my type that I already copied. I'm going to paste it twice. I'm going to go to Edit, Paste. Edit, paste. And it almost fits in there nicely, but not quite. Let me click four times to select all of the type. And I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Exactly what I was hoping for. And I'm going to go to my selection tool and go to type, type on a path, options. And I'm going to apply, instead of rainbow, gravity. And watch what happens. Like you would expect with gravity, it's pulling all of the individual characters to the center, making it look three-dimensional as it goes around the square. Kind of nice. Let me just click OK. Some of the other options, let me just select my Type on a Path object with my Selection Tool and go back under the Type menu to Type on a Path Options. And what is this about? Align baseline to path center. Hmm. Well, if you read it across, you'll be able to figure it out. By default, it's aligning the baseline of the type to the center of the path. What happens if I align the center of the type to the center of the path? And when would I ever do that? Well, let's click OK and see a particular usage of that. My stroke right now up here in the control panel is 0.625 points, not very thick. Let me make it thicker than my type. I'm going to go to 30 points. Well, I can't see my type. But what if I made my type a different color? Let me go to my Type on a Path tool and just select all my type by clicking four times and go to my Fill pop-up in the control panel. And instead of black, I'm going to choose cyan and go back to my selection tool and click off of it. And you can see what it's doing. It's aligning the center of the type to the center of the path. Really a cool feature. We're going to be talking more about type formatting features as well as styles in upcoming lessons.